بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله والسلام عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله we continue going over the tremendous book by the Imam فضل الشيخ Imam Abd Aziz bin Baz Rahimahu Allah Ta'ala The book which is entitled Durus Muhammad Li'amat Al-Ummah The book entitled Important Lessons for the General Masses of the Muslims Reading from the explanation of the Fadil to Shaykh Shaykh Abd Aziz bin Shaykh Abd Al-Muhsin Al-Abbad, Al-Badr, Hidhuhumullahu Ta'ala. We had reached the second lesson, and we are at the beginning of the second lesson of this tremendous work of important lessons. So we have reached the second lesson where Imam bin Baz, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala, he says, الدرس الثاني The second lesson The second lesson أركان الإسلام That second lesson is about the The pillars of Al-Islam The Arkan of Islam The Shaykh he says بيان أركان الإسلام بيان أركان الإسلام الخامسة the explanation of the five pillars of Islam. وَأَوَّلُهَا And the first of those pillars. وَأَعْظَمُهَا And the greatest of those pillars. Shahada And لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said the first of them and the greatest of these pillars is the shahada. That none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. بشرح معانيها With the explanation of its meaning. مع بيان شروط لا إله إلا الله An explanation of its meaning accompanied with an explanation of the prerequisites or conditions for La ilaha illallah. Sheikh bin Baz rahimullah ta'ala, he says, wa ma'anaha, and its meaning, La ilaha, 
this portion of it that none has the right to be worshipped in truth. Nafian Jamir Mayuabad Bindunilah then this negates everything that is worshipped other than Allah. Illallah the statement Illallah Muthbitan Muthbitan Al Ibada Lillah Wahdahu La Sharika Lah and the statement except Allah then this affirms the worship for Allah alone without any partners then this affirms the worship of Allah alone without any partners ma'am beyond a shadow of a doubt the likes of these lessons are of tremendous importance because it is incumbent and it is a must that we know and we understand very well beyond a shadow of any type of doubt the pillars of Islam and at the head of them is the Shahada so it is incumbent that we know the meaning of the Shahada it is incumbent and it is a must that we know the meaning Naam. These pillars of, of Al Islam, they are tremendously important, and thus they have been called pillars. They have been called pillars. As Sheikh Abdul Razak, Ta'ala, he mentions, so that we gain some understanding and we understand the significance of these particular affairs and why they have been called pillars due to their importance and due to their significance. The Shaykh he mentions, he says, Al Islam lahu arkan. That Islam, it has pillars. We translate it as pillars, arkan. La yaqumu illa alayha. Of which it will not be established except on top of it. Naam. It has pillars. Islam, it has pillars. It has arkan. That it will not be established except on top of it. Meaning, without these pillars, then Islam will not be established. Meaning that an individual, he won't be upon Islam, he won't be a Muslim, if he does not establish the pillars of Al-Islam. The Shaykh, he mentions, he says, Wal-Rukan. What is a rukan He says, Janib. Janib al-Shay. Al-Aqwa al La yaqum al-Shay. Illa alayhi. He says is that it is a flank of a thing, a strong supporting flank, supporting pillar of a thing, on which a strong supporting flank on which without it that thing will not stand. Naam, a strong supporting flank. لا يقوم شيء إلا عليه that a thing will not stand except on top of it. It will not stand except on top of it. And it has been called a pillar because it's likened to the supporting structures of or supporting pillars of a structure. The supporting pillars of a structure, if you take them out, نعم, then that structure is liable to fall, is liable to collapse. It will collapse. The Shaykh he mentions, he says, وَمِثْلُ أَرْكَانِ الْإِسْلَامِ مِثْلُ الْأَعْمَادِ or مِثْلُ الْأَعْمِدَةِ فِي الْبُنْيَانِ He says in that the Arkan of Islam, it is like الْأَعْمِدَةِ is like the supporting pillars of a house or of a structure. Naam. The poet he mentions, and he brings the lines of poetry here, the poet he says, وَالْبَيْتُ لَا يُبْنَى إِلَّا بِأَعْمِدَةٍ وَلَا عِمَادًا إِذَا لَمْ تُرْسَى أَوْتَادُ He says that And the house is not built except upon pillars And there can be no pillars If they are not anchored by pegs 
Naam. That a structure, it needs pillars. And if you take those supporting pillars away, then the structure will collapse, the structure will fall. So these particular five affairs, the pillars of Al-Islam, then they are the pillars of the deen. And if they are taken away, then it will be impossible for a person to be a Muslim. If a person were to refuse to take the shahada, ma'am, then it will be impossible for them to enter into an Islam. They will not be a Muslim. If a person were to abandon the prayer, then they will not be a Muslim. If a person were to say there is no such thing as prayer, then they will not be a Muslim. If a person were to say there is no such thing as fasting in Ramadan, then they will not be a Muslim. And so on and so forth. Naam, and so on and so forth. These are the pillars of Al-Islam. Being that these things are so important, then it is a must that we have some understanding of them. فَأَرْكَانُ Islam. So the pillars of Al-Islam, دَعَائِمُ وَأَعْمِدَةُ The pillars of Islam, then they are its pillars. They are its supporting pillars. وَجَوَانِبُ And they are الْأَقْوَى and, uh, and they are the flanks of it. أَلَّتِي لَا يَقُومُ الْإِسْلَامِ إِلَّا عَلَيْهَا Of which Islam is not established except on top of them. Except on top of them. نعم. Islam And what is Islam? Al-Islam هُوَ الْإِسْتِسْلَامُ لِلَّهِ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى Al-Islam, what it means is to submit oneself unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tabarak wa ta'ala. Naam. To submit oneself to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. All blessed and lofty is He. Bit-tawheed. By submitting oneself unto Allah azza wa jal with a tawheed I want us really to reflect upon the definition and the meaning of Al-Islam. I want us to reflect. Because as Muslims, it is incumbent upon us that we are constantly submitting ourselves unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Upon it, Tawheed. Wa qiyad lahu and that we are compliant unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our obedience. These aspects are very important. Naam. And I want you to see the relation on why this concept of submitting unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, submitting to the rules and the regulations of Allah ta'ala's deen, complying unto Allah azza wa jal with obedience. And a total disavowment of polytheism and of the polytheist. These things are essential. Listen to what Sheikh Abdul Razak he mentions. He says, فَمَنْ أَبَى أَنْ يَسْتَسْلِمَ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَهُوَ مُسْتَكْبِرٌ That whoever he obstinately refuses to submit themselves unto Allah, then this is one who is arrogant. He is arrogant. He is an obstinate, arrogant individual. Naam. He is an obstinate, arrogant individual. Why? Because he refuses to submit to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. So those who refuse to submit to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then such individuals, it is not possible that they can be Muslim. It's not possible. They are kuffar. Naam. And the like of this type of kafir is like who? Is like the shaytan. Naam. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Aba wa stakbara wa kana min al-kafirin. That he refused, he abstinently refused. And he was arrogant and haughty. And he was from the kuffar. 
نعم and he was from the kuffar وكان من الكافرين and he was from the kuffar talking about who the shaytan the shaytan he absolutely refused and he was arrogant and he was haughty so he's a kafir so when one refuses to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they are what then they are a kafir نعم because the one who is a Muslim, mu'min, then he is the one who he submits himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He submits himself to the worship of Allah and Allah alone. Naam, this is the Muslim. The one who has submitted himself. The one who refuses obstinately, then this is the one who is arrogant. He's a kafir. The Shaykh, he says, Woman. أَسَسْلَمَ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَلِغَيْرِهِ فَهُوَ مُشْرِكٌ And whoever submits himself to, to Allah and to other than Allah, then this one is a polytheist. Ma'am? Because you have, on from another angle, those who, they submit themselves to the worship of Allah. Ma'am? So they may worship Allah. But at the same time, they worship other than Allah. Naam. So these individuals, then they are polytheist. Then they are polytheist. And this is why from Islam is what? Wal bara'ah min shirk wal mushrikeen. And a total disinvolvement, total disinvolvement of what? Of shirk, of polytheism, and the polytheist. Naam, and the polytheist. These aspects are very important that one must submit themselves unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one must submit them and he submit themselves to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they must submit themselves unto Allah alone to nothing else now this is a vital importance a shaykh goes on to say shaykh abdul razaq goes on to say وَبِهَذَا يُعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْإِسْلَامِ يُضَادُهُ يُضَادُهُ أَمْرًا He says, so therefore we know that Islam, that which is the opposite of it, then it will be two affairs. That which is the opposite of Islam, and that which will contradict it and go against it, and is the antithesis of it, then it will be two things. الْإِسْتِكْبَارُ وَالشِّرْكِ Abstinent arrogance and polytheism. The first of those two things, which is the opposite of Islam, Naam, Yubaduhu is what? Al Istikbar. It is abstinent, ignorant, uh, uh, abstinent arrogance. Abstinent arrogance. The one he is absolutely arrogant. Naam, this is the opposite of Islam. And the second is what? Is shirk, polytheism. Polytheism is what is the opposite of al Islam. Naam. So if one wants to submit themselves unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in totality, then both of these two things must be avoided. Both of these two things must be avoided with you no know, if ands or buts about it. So we need to and let us reflect upon this. And let us reflect upon our submission unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let us always try to enhance and increase our submission unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in that there is success and there is no way to the Jannah without submitting ourselves unto Allah upon Tawheed without being compliant unto Allah with obedience and without disassociation from polytheism and the polytheist. The Shaykh goes on and he says, Al Islam, Wal Islam, Yaqumu ala arkanin khams, khamsa. And that Islam is built upon five pillars. Yubayinuha al Nabi. Naam. Aw, Bayyanaha al Nabi. Al Kareem, Alihi, Salatu wa Salam. Fi hadith Ibn Umar, the Prophet, the noble Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, he mentioned and he explained what these pillars are in the hadith of Ibn Umar. 
Naam. So in the hadith that is narrated by who? By Ibn Umar. A person he says, and what's the dalil? In there, yani, many proofs and evidences. But from them, if a person says, what's the dalil? That Islam has five pillars, and that those pillars are the shahada, salah, si, uh, suyam, so on and so forth. Naam. Then we tell him, then it's from the hadith of Ibn Umar. From the hadith of Ibn Umar. Naam. Wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Inna al-Islam buniya ala khams. He said, verily Islam is built upon five. Islam is built upon how many? Five. So it's very clear. He says, five pillars of Islam. Tayyip. Met dalil. What's the proof and evidence? Hadith of who? Hadith of? Mm. Who? Ibn Umar. Ibn Umar. Naam. The hadith of Ibn Umar. Naam. With the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that verily Islam is built upon five. Shahadati an la ilaha illallah. The shahada that none has the right to be worshipped in the truth except Allah. Naam. Tayyip. With the shahada, wa wa anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, and then verily Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Wa iqam al salat and the establishment of the prayer. Wa ita is zakat and the paying of charity. Wa siyam in Ramadan and fasting in Ramadan. Wa hajj al bayt and making hajj to the house, making hajj to the house, pilgrimage to the house. This hadith has been collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Naam. The wording of this particular hadith is from Muslim. The wording here, mentioned here, is from Muslim. And that wording as mentioned here is that verily Islam is built upon five. The testimony that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. The establishment of the prayer. The paying of the zakah, of charity. Fasting in Ramadan and making hajj to the house. This wording is collected by Muslim. Naam. Oh, this is the wording from Muslim. But the hadith is collected by both Bukhari and Muslim. Naam. So the hadith is found in both Bukhari and Muslim. But the wording of this particular hadith, which was just mentioned, is from Muslim. Is from Muslim. Naam. The Shaykh says, فَهَذِهِ خَمْسَةُ أَرْكَانٌ لِلْإِسْلَامِ These are the five pillars of Islam. وَأَعْمِدَةٌ لَا يَقُومُ إِلَّا عَلَيْهَا And they are the pillars in which it is not established except on top of it. Or it is not, just, it's not established except by way of it or with it. Naam. Because when we say pillars of Islam and that yani, uh, we, we don't want anyone to understand that these are pillars that yani, are outside of Islam. That Islam is established on it, but they are outside of Islam. No, these are essential pillars from the deen of Al-Islam. From the deen of Al-Islam. Naam. And the greatest of these pillars, because if we're going to start, then we're going to start with the greatest. And the, the order in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned them, is of tremendous importance and tremendous benefit. Whereas the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he started with the greatest of these pillars. So he says, وَأَعْظَمُ هَذِهِ الْأَرْكَانِ And the greatest of these pillars, وَأَعْلَاهَا شَأْنًا And the highest of them, the most lofty of them in status, شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The greatest of them and the most lofty of them in status is the shahada that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Naam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If someone were to ask you what is the greatest pillar of the deen of al-Islam then the answer would be what? The shahada. Naam. The shahada. If they say, where would you get that from? What is, what is an indication that the shahada is the greatest pillar of al-Islam? Then you tell them because it is the first pillar that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned in the hadith that was narrated by Ibn Umar and collected in 
Bukhari and Muslim. Now, you say because in the hadith of Ibn Umar that is collected by Al Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he started with the shahada. Now, he started with the shahada. The Shaykh he says, وَفِي الْحَدِيثِ فَقَالْ إِنَّ الْحَدِيثِ Or before that, he mentions, he says, وَلِهَذَا قَدَّمَهَا عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ And due to this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he began with this pillar, فِي الْحَدِيثِ فَقَالْ It's not a hadith, and he said, بُنِيَ الْإِسْلَامِ عَلَى خَمْسِ شَهَادَ إِنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ That Islam is built upon five, the testimony that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. This particular wording that the Shaykh he mentions here, then this is the wording from Bukhari. This is the wording from Bukhari. Ma'am? You with me? But this is the wording from Bukhari. The Shaykh he says, فَالشَّهَادَتَان So the shahadatan بِوَحْدَنِيَّ The shahadatan يعني لِلَّهِ بِالْوَحْدَنِيَّ وَلِلْنَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ بِالْرِسَالَةِ هُمَا أَعْظَمْ أَرْكَانَ الْإِسْلَامِ So therefore the shahadatan Singling out Allah alone with worship. One. Two. Testifying to the messengership and the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then these are the greatest pillars of Islam. These are the greatest pillars of Islam. Naam. Wa a'adham. Mabanihi. Bal. Huma aslid deen. Wa asasuhu alladhi alayhi yubna. He said that they are the greatest pillars of Islam, the greatest and the, and, and the greatest pillars of Islam. Rather, they are the foundation of the religion of Islam. They are the origin of the religion of Islam and its foundation of which it is built upon. In which it is built upon. Naam. طيب. The Shaykh, he mentions, he says, وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Ma'am, Wala ilaha illallah. Huwa a'adham. Kalimat ala al itlaq. He says that la ilaha illallah, then this is the greatest statement, period. This is the greatest statement, hand down. There is no statement greater than la ilaha illallah. Ma'am. Wa afdaluha. It is the greatest of the statements and it is the most noble and prestigious of the statements. And it is the best dhikr. So if someone were to ask you, what's the best dhikr? What's the best remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then it is what? La ilaha illallah. Naam. The best dhikr is La ilaha illallah. Naam. وَهِيَ أَفْضَلُ ذِكْرِ It is the best dhikr. So we should increase. We should ask ourselves, you know, because the purpose and the reason for studying is to implement. That's the purpose. We learn so that we can act and then we can do. And we all should know something from the importance of dhikr. The importance of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. So thus we should know the greatest of the dhikr. If we're going to busy ourselves with making dhikr with remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should know what is the greatest of the dhikr. And the greatest of the dhikr is to say, La ilaha illallah. Now, I want each and every one of us just to question ourselves, right? I want each and every one of us to interrogate ourselves so I ask outside of the salah outside of the salah how many times today just today did we say la ilaha illallah this is a question we each ask ourselves right how many times 
today have we said La ilaha illallah. Now I want us to think about, in contrast, how many times today have we used our tongue? How many times today have we used our tongue to make statements? To make statements. And we know that the greatest statement is La ilaha illallah. So with all those statements that we have made today, all the times we have utilized our tongue to make statements and to utter uh, statements and the like, how many times have our tongues uttered the greatest statement just today? And then if we want to take that exercise a bit further, then we can go back a week and say, okay, from week to week, how many times did my tongue utter the best statement of La ilaha illallah outside of the salah, outside of the salah, naam? And then compare that to how many times we made statements that were either of no benefit to us or statements that actually harmed us. Just as a litmus test to see exactly how well or not we are doing right now. Naam. The Shaykh goes on and he says, وَيَقُولُ النَّبِيِّ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ But the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, أَفْضَلُ الذِّكْرِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said that the best dhikr is لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Because see, if a person makes a statement, and this is very important that we, that we need to know, a person makes a statement, مَحْمَ مَنْ كَانْ Whoever he is, now, whoever he is, Meaning outside of who? Outside of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says something, nah, it's the truth. Khalas. Nah. We're talking about outside of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If a human being other than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes a statement about the deen of Al-Islam, then we need what? Delil. We need proofs. Huh? We need proofs. So the Shaykh, he mentions that La ilaha illallah is the greatest dhikr. Okay? okay, so a person he come and he say that's a that's a heavy statement that La ilaha illallah is the greatest dhikr. It's a heavy statement. It's the best dhikr, the best of it, the most excellent of the dhikr is La ilaha illallah. It's a heavy statement. Met What's your proof? We need proof. The proof is this hadith. أَفْضَلُ ذِكْرِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That the best dhikr is لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ In this hadith has been collected in At-Tirmadhi وَبْنُ مَاجَ And it's from the hadith of Jabir bin Abdullah So this hadith has been collected in At-Tirmadhi نعم And it's from And also collected in Ibn Majah and it's from the had and is narrated on the authority of Jabir bin Abdullah. Wa hassanahu al Albani fi Sahiha. And Al Albani graded this hadith as being Hassan in Al Sahiha. Naam. So the hadith has been collected by Al Tirmadhi. Wabnu Majah, narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah, and graded as being Hassan by Al Albani. Naam. And that is the hadith that the, 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 the greatest and the best dhikr is La ilaha illallah. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said خير الدعاء دعاء يوم عرفة That the best supplication Is the supplication of يوم العرفة نعم And listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Listen to this He said وخير ما قلت أنا خير وخير ما قلت أنا والنبيون من قبلي and the best thing that I have said and the best thing that the prophets before me said Shaif the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the best thing that I have said and the best thing that the prophets before me said was listen to this 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 uh, supplication this dua 
Because this is, is a dua that if we don't know it, we need to learn it. This is a dua that we need to check and to make sure all of our children, they know it. Ma'am? This dua. And, that, and, 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 and this dua it is La ilaha illallah. Ah, we see the we see the greatest dhikr, right? It starts with the greatest dhikr. La ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la sharika lahu. Lahu al mulk. Wa lahu al hamd. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Naam. The best dhikr, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the best dua, the best supplication is the supplication of Yawm Arafah. The best dua is the dua of Yawm Arafah. And the best thing that I have said, and the best thing that the Prophets before me have said is, none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah alone without any partners. Unto Him belongs the dominion. Unto him belongs all of the praise. And he is over everything most capable. This is the best dua. The best yani, uh, supplication. It's the same. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu. Lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd. Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. The best dua. Naam. So this is another proof and evidence that the best dua is La ilaha illallah. Naam. The best dhikr, the best remembrance is La ilaha illallah. The best dua, La ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la sharika lahu. Lahu al-mulk, wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Naam. This hadith, أخرجه أحمد وترمذي من حديث عبد الله عن عبد الله بن عمر وحسنه الألباني في الصحيحة. This is a hadith that has been collected by Ahmed and a Turmadi or a Tirmadi you can say it both ways and it's from the hadith of Abdullah bin Amr and it's been graded as being Hassan by Al-Albani in Al-Sahihah Naam so the takeaway at least yani, one of the takeaways from today's class or the homeworks is to memorize this dua for those who have not memorized this dua and to go over this dua with your families inshallah ta'ala to make sure everyone knows it and that they know it well and they're saying it right the shaykh Allah ta'ala he says وَلِهَذَا يَقُولُ اللَّهُ ta'ala he said and, and, and for this Allah the Most High, he says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ To show the importance of this kalima of La ilaha illallah, Allah Ta'ala, he says, and we have not sent, what translated means, and we have not sent before you, O Muhammad, a messenger, except that we revealed unto him that verily, La ilaha illallah, that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except me so therefore worship me now that nothing has the right to be worshiped in the truth except for me meaning Allah so therefore worship me now so worship me so worship Allah this statement this kalima is so important that what that every messenger came to their people calling their people to it every messenger came to their people giving them da'wah to la ilaha illallah When we see the importance of this kalima, of La ilaha illallah, and the importance of implementing La ilaha illallah, who would ever get tired of talking about it? Right? Like, I mean, who in their right mind? Huh? 
who in their right mind will ever get tired of talking about it and reminding the people of it? Now, you have individuals who are sick. Individuals who are sick. And they look for excuses to not mention it. It's due to their sickness. You follow what I'm saying? Making it seem like there are other issues that have to be mentioned to the exclusion of mentioning La ilaha illallah. This is sickness. You follow? Even when dealing with social issues. Even when dealing with social issues. You mean to tell me you can't also remind the people of La ilaha illallah? Right? People who are poor, they need help financially. They may need food to be fed. There's no room, there's no opportunity there to reminding to remind them of La ilaha illallah. Of course there is. It can be a program designed for single mothers and battered women. They don't need to be reminded of La ilaha illallah and called to Tawheed, of course. Now, calling them to Tawheed means you can't help them? No. You can do both, correct? Right. A person who is struggling with drug abuse and alcoholism. Are we to understand that there is not a, it's not a vital component of their recovery to remind them and teach them about the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And how they must submit themselves unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course it is. So these individuals who come and they make it seem as if if you speak about Tawheed is only to the detriment of social issues are people who are sick. Because if you want to deal with the social issues, then that begins with a Tawheed. The middle of it is a Tawheed. The end of it is a Tawheed. Naam. Because by calling the people and teach them about it, Tawheed, you can still deal with whatever else you have to deal with. Whether it be feeding them, whether it be helping them financially pay their bills, whether it be helping battered women, whether it be helping homeless people, whether it be helping orphans, whether it be, it be, it be, it be, it be, it be, it be. We can always talk about Tawheed. In every class, every subject, we can talk about Tawheed. When a person is talking about Sirah, Tawheed don't come up talking about the biography of the Prophet Wasallam. When a person is talking about history of the Muslims, Naam, Tawheed don't come up and talking about the history of the Muslims throughout the ages. Huh? If a person is talking about fiqh, Tawheed don't come up and talking about Islamic jurisprudence. Huh? Of course it does. If a person is talking about hadith, the topic of Tawheed don't come up and talking about hadith, of course it does. If a person is talking about any science from the sciences, it, Tawheed it comes up and it's relevant. If a person is talking about mathematics, there's not an opportunity within that to talk about Tawheed, of course it is. It's always an opportunity to talk about Tawheed. Why not? <laughs> All right? So these individuals who make it seem like it's one or the other, these people, these are the ones who are sick. These are the ones who are sick. Because when you understand the importance of La ilaha illallah, you understand the beauty of La ilaha illallah, you understand the, the, the status of La ilaha illallah, you understand that La ilaha illallah miftahul jannah, that La ilaha illallah is the key to jannah, why wouldn't you want to talk about it? I mean, like, why not? Why wouldn't you want to talk about it? Of course you want to talk about it. Of course you want to remind people of it, because that's how... Awesome it is, of course. Only people who are sick find excuses not to talk about it. They want to talk about something else because he's sick. Talk about what needs to be spoken about and remind them about Tawheed. Remind them about Tawheed and talk about whatever else they need. That's how you do it. kulli hal. The Shaykh he says, وَهِيَ زُبْدَةُ الدَّعْوَةِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ That لَا إِلَهَ لَلَّهِ Then this is the cream of the da'wah of the, of the prophets, of the messengers. This is the, 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 the best, the top, the, 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 the best of the top of the da'wah. You know, you know how they say like the cream of the crop, yeah? The best of it, yeah, this is the best of the, the da'wah of the NBA and the Rusul is لَا إِلَهَ لَلَّهِ وَخِلَافَةُ الرِّسَالَةِهِمْ And if you had to summarize... 
the message. If you had to summarize the messengership and the prophethood of each messenger, each prophet, you have to summarize their prophethood, then it would be with what? La ilaha illallah. If you had to summarize it, it would be with La ilaha illallah. Naam. وأول كلمة يسمعها أقوامهم منهم and the first statement in which their people heard from them was أول ما يخاطبونهم به the first thing that they addressed their people with was اعبد الله ما لكم من إله غيره worship Allah alone you don't have anything that should be worshipped other than Him you have no deity other than Him worship Allah alone you have no deity other than Him that was the first thing they said to their people Allah, what made dalil? Person come and say, well, what's the deal with the dalil? Allah Taala, He just told us that's the ayah, huh? اعبد الله ما لكم من إله غيره اعبد الله ما لكم من إله من إله غيره worship Allah. You don't have any uh, deity other than Him. And Allah Taala says, ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن اعبد الله واجتنب الطاغوت. And we sent to every nation a messenger. Uh, proclaiming worship Allah alone and stay away from the the, uh, the false deities. So every every messenger went to their people calling them to La ilaha illallah. Naam. وقد نبه الشيخ رحمه الله and the Sheikh meaning Sheikh bin Baz رحمه الله تعالى he drew notice to this and he drew our attention to this. Important fact, أن هذا مقام مقام التعليم الشهادتين that this uh, uh, right now this is the time for teaching the shahadatain. This is the point where the shahadatain to be taught. يحتاج إلى الشرح معانيها. It necessitates when you teach the shahadatain, and the uh, يعني it necessitates that you explain the meaning. That you explain the meaning because it's not enough just to say it, but you have to explain what the meaning. Naam. Wa ma'a ma'a bayan shuruq la ilaha illallah. You have to explain the meaning as well as go over the conditions of la ilaha illallah. That you have to explain the meaning and go over the conditions. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى We will go over the meaning of لا إله إلا الله in more depth and in more detail بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى inside of the, the next uh, درس فَنَكْتَفِي بِهَذَا الْقَدَرِ وَصَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا